All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Joshua Boatman. I'm the Regional Technology Director for the Ohio Valley Region. And today's regional training will be on smart plans within command. Um, smart plans give you a quick rundown. Smart plans are our way to set up automated tasks, uh, whether it's reaching out and touching a client via an automated text message or an email, or even creating tasks for yourself to do some personal touches. Uh, in addition to that, you can have it create tasks just to remind you to do certain things for clients, not necessarily reaching out to talk to clients. So the first thing I'm always going to do is try to share my screen after that wonderful introduction. And hopefully we are seeing it. Sometimes it works. It looks like we are good. Perfect. Awesome. So when we talk about smart plans, um, the first thing we always kind of want to talk about is where do we go to a smart plan? How do we set these things up, right? So the thing I point out every single class, if you've ever attended any class with me, is if we go over to the left-hand side and we select the red KW, that is gonna expand a list of all the different applets within command. Um, this is kind of a really handy a trick because I'm not very visual, I need to see the words, so that way I can actually identify what is what. So here you can see we have smart plans. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into that. Once we have our smart plan screen loaded, I'm gonna kind of walk you through a couple of things of what we're seeing here. Currently right now, we are seeing my smart plans. These are the uh, smart plans either that I have built or that I have downloaded from the smart plans library. Um, there's two things here that you can kind of see. People's, people plans, these are the ones that I have made and published. These would be any smart plans that I have created for myself um, that I then want to, want to upload to Keller Williams. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the class. As we look at this, we're going to see a list of all the different smart plans. Um, so these are going to be all the ones within our library. Uh, if we see on the left hand side, it's going to be the name of the smart plan. If we see this little drop down, if we click it, that's not a good example. So let's do this one. So with this particular smart plan, this is actually going to create, uh, it's going to walk us through what it actually does. Right. So it's going to say, hey, it's going to do a phone call, a delay, a touch task, things like that. This will make a little bit more sense once we jump into building a smart plan. Over to the right hand side there, you're going to see actually how many contacts we have associated with the smart plan. If we click on this little eye, it'll bring up a list of those contacts. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the class. And then you can see when the smart plan was created, how long this smart plan will run. So this is an eight day smart plan. And then actually how many touches. And these are going to be contact uh, client touch points, right? Lead touch points where we are physically reaching out to the lead in some form or some fashion. To the right of that, we can see where we can easily add a contact. We can edit a smart plan. And over these three little dots, we can copy it. We can publish it. And if it wasn't an active smart plan, for instance, we could delete that smart plan. So we'll dig a little bit deeper into all of those um, options as we kind of go through the class. So the first thing I want to do is create a smart plan. It's pretty simple. We are going to go in the upper right-hand corner and we are gonna click the Create button. Now, what we always have to do is name our smart plan. So we'll name this one Regional Smart Plan Class 2, because I've already done this once. Keep in mind, all smart plan names must be unique. So I wouldn't be able to create one called test, test, test or commercial class smart plan because that smart plan already exists with that name. So we'll go ahead and we'll click apply. And this is going to take us into the smart plan setup screen. So a couple quick things that I always like to point out immediately is right here at the top is our smart plan summary. This is how we are gonna be able to track how many days this smart plan is going to run for, how many individual steps are within this smart plan, and how many total touches this smart plan will make. We wanna keep, uh, keep in touch, I said, uh, keep in mind, um, that would be a funny joke to work in somehow, but we wanna keep in mind that uh, command will protect us from ourselves. So we couldn't create a seven day smart plan that reaches out to a client 15 times 
command's going to say, wait a minute, that's way too many touches in such a short amount of period. There are some built-in limitations with that, just so that way you're not harassing or over, um, overreaching out to potential clients. To the right is another way for us to immediately add contacts to a particular smart plan if we wanted to. We're going to skip this option for now. And then um, we can actually save the smart plan every step of the way when we're doing it. Um, as we're building it, right? There's another way to save that I'll point out, but I just want to kind of point out the save button in the upper right hand corner. If we ever need to change the name of the smart plan, we can do that from this screen up here, which is a matter of clicking in and say, I want this to be class three, not a big deal. And then over here on the left-hand side is where we'll actually start to see the steps and configure each step as we build them. Um, one of the things I will talk about is the triggers. Uh, so be prepared for that a little bit later in the class before we leave this screen. So as you can notice on the right hand side, we have seven different smart plan steps. We're going to kind of go through each one um, and kind of give you an idea of what it does and the value of it um, and how you could possibly use this to build out your own. So the first one I always like to start out with is the make a call. So when I click make a call on the left hand side, it immediately adds that step. So I want you to pay attention as we start to build out this smart plan and I'll kind of draw your eye to the summary. But here you can see currently right now, this is a one day, one step, one touch smart plan because we're telling command to create a task for this contact when we add it to this smart plan for us to make a call on day one. So if you notice within the step and we'll kind of point this out as we go through it, this is the first step that we'll execute on day one of the smart plan. Over on the left-hand side, we can designate when this should be due. So think about when a contact is added on the first day, I can make this make a call task due today, or I can have it due up to 14 days from the date we add the smart plan. So, or that we add the contact. So if we add the contact today, it will create the task but the due date for the task will be 10 days from today. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We'll go ahead and we'll leave it on today then. And now we have two sections we need to kind of fill out when, it, when we uh, deal with the make a call. We have the task name, which is going to be the one line summary that appears within your task applet or on your Kelly app, or if you go into the task section of a particular contact, and then we can be a little bit more verbose and describe what this task entails. The thing I like to point out immediately on the right hand side is this little drop down. And anytime you see the brackets with the F dot, these are merge fields. And merge fields are extremely valuable. What they allow us to do is plug in automated information being pulled from that client's contact to create the task. So say for instance, I wanna say call, and I can come over here to the right-hand side, drop down this merge field, select contact first name, and I'm gonna put a space, I'm gonna do contact last name, space, I'm gonna do a dash, I'm gonna drop it down, I'm gonna put contact phone. So when this task gets created, it just isn't gonna say call you know, uh, Marshall Mathers, it's gonna say call Marshall Mathers dash and here's Marshall's phone number. And the idea behind that is versus having to drill into your contact once you see the task is created to locate his phone number, you're instead gonna be able to just click on that phone number right from the task list or copy and paste if your phone doesn't allow you to click on it um, and do some really cool things like that. Within the task description, you could put in something extremely important, say check in with him on his recent, well, I should say on their check-in with them on their recent purchase, right? I wanna kind of have any kind of indicator within that description. You don't have to, um, it doesn't have an asterisk, so you don't need a task description, um, but you can include merge tags within here as well. Now it's very limited to the merge tags we can use for a task. Um, but I just kind of want to point that out that that's a really, really valuable piece. The other thing that's interesting here is we have this add hyperlink box. To be honest, this is for you to plug in a website, I assume, 
Um, I don't know why that would be valuable when creating a task. I don't know why you would need to be reminded of a website that you need to go and click on. I don't know of a good use case, but if you have any ideas or if something makes sense to you, definitely throw it in the chat so I can kind of learn and share it and appear smarter the next time I teach this class. But here you can see we built out this single step smart plan. Now, one of the things we can do, and I always kind of recommend as you're building out a smart plan, is to save it periodically, right? You could lose your internet, the power could go out, um, any number of things could happen, and I don't ever want to lose my work. So I kind of am one of those people that saves a lot. You can click the right-hand button and click save, or below each step, there's going to be a little checkbox that you can click to hit save as well. And you'll see that it's saved my smart plan. If I wanted to delete a specific step below that step, that is what the X is for. That will allow me to delete the smart plan and the arrows will kind of walk through a little bit later, but this will allow me to move a single step up and down within the smart plan. So here we are, we've created a task to make a phone call, right? And it's gonna be due the day we add the contact to the smart plan, pretty exciting. But now let's say, I want to wait a couple days and then have it remind me um, to post something on the client's social media, right? Well, if I want to extend the day of the smart plan, I'm going to use the set delay step. So when I click on this, it's gonna drop in the set delay step and you're gonna notice this is gonna execute on day one, but then I can then tell the smart plan to delay three, four, five, six, however many days. So if I do three days, you'll notice this has become a four day smart plan because it's going to execute these two steps on day one, All right? I wanna draw your eye to that. And then it's gonna wait three days. And then I'm going to create a task. Then on day four, it's gonna prompt me to create a task. Now, the biggest difference between create a task and make a call is, you know, they both create an actual task within your command. Make a call is a specifically designated one for you to place a phone call. Creating a task could either be a touch or a non-touch. So if you notice, I put, this is a four day, three step smart plan that has two touches. And that's because when we create a task, it is counting it as a touch by default. If I don't want this to be a touch, if this is not a task that's reminding me to interact with the client in any way, I can easily click non-touch, right? And this could be anything, right? A non-touch task could be, you know, verify, you know, that the client's address is correct. You know, maybe I want to check to make sure that I have their birthday, right? So I could say, hey, it's a non-touch, you know, uh, check, for a birthday. Now see if we are friends on Facebook and see what their birthday is. Right. And thank you, Grammarly, for always correcting my grammar and my spelling. I love Grammarly. Um, once again, with the task, you have access to these merge fields, right? If you so choose to as well within the task description as well. And then I can hit the little save and that saves my smart plan. Right, we're just slowly building this out in whatever order that we want. Now let's say I wanna do another delay and I'm gonna do a one day delay. So now on day four, not only is it going to create this task that's due today, right? That's gonna be due on the day they hit day four. Then I wanna delay it another day. So now we've become a five day smart plan. And now let's say I want to send an email to the client. So here is where we can design and build out a basic email or utilize an email from designs. So we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but the first thing I wanna point out is the reply to section. When you send an email from command, it doesn't actually look like it's coming from you. So in this case, Mike Keller Williams' email address is boatmanj at kw.com. It doesn't look like it's coming from Boatman J. It's gonna come from a unique Keller Williams email address. 
But if the client replies back to that email, this is the email address that that reply will get sent to. Now, why can't we make it look like that it's coming from your email? Well, technically we can, but best practices is that we don't do that. And the reason is, is that a lot of these email vendors, um, AOL, Gmail, you name it, right? A lot of the major e uh, email players, they're, they're able to detect if that email was generated from your actual physical email address. And if it's not, it, was a, it has a higher probability of getting marked as spam. So to try to avoid that, to try to make sure we have the highest deliverable rates possible, we don't make it look like it's coming from your email address because that would be spoofing the email address. Um, and I'm sure some of you have dealt with that. If you ever need to change that, if that's not the right email address, you can click settings here and that will take you to the screen where you can update that. To the right of this, we can put in our subject. So I'm just gonna use the subject of test email one. And one of the things I always kind of like to point out at this section, um, for those of you who are curious, um, you know, studies have shown that email, emails with three subject line, three words in the subject line or fewer actually have a 70% open rate. Sounds insane. Um, I don't quite understand it. Um, and I don't even understand how a study like that actually gets fed, you know, made, who pays for that. Um, it's interesting in and of itself, I guess. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, just kind of want to point that out to you. Subject line is required. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so now the next thing we can do is select our email type. And this is where I was referring to a basic email or an HTML or designs-based email. A simple email is just that. It's gonna be basic text utilizing the basic text editor. So you can adjust some fonts, you can bold, underline, italicize, you can add some bullets in, um, we can change the color of the font if we want. We can pick our justification, left, center, right. Um, we can even add a hyperlink in if we want to link to something specifically. Um, and of course, this is where we can do our merge fields. So if you just want a basic email, you can say, hey, comma, using this merge field, contact first name, right? Because we're going to pull that first name from the contact that gets added to this smart plan. And we're gonna say, just wanted to check in and see how things are going. Right, how exciting. Um, you'll notice from uh, when we're building out an email, we actually have access to a little bit more merge fields than when we were creating a task, right? Because a task is assigned to a contact and then the person that is assigned to that contact within command um, is the one that the task is created for to accomplish. So said another way, if you're a solo agent, you own all your contacts. So any tasks that are created by a smart plan are your responsibility. If you're on a team, individual team members can be assigned a particular contact. And when that contact hits that smart plan, it creates that task for them to do um, to uh, and associates it with that contact. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense if you're on a team. What we can do with these merge fields though, we have additional ones. In, in, in addition to contact merge fields, we have agent merge, merge field. Well, I was having a hard time saying that. So here we can say, sincerely, agent first name, space, agent last name. Now, if you're a solo agent, you could just type in your name and your information. You do not have to use the merge fields. The merge fields are generally reserved for um, teams, right? Where they could be using the same smart plan, but depending upon who is assigned the contact, it'll plug in their information, right? Um, and I would recommend if you are ever going to think of publishing your smart plan to the library, which we'll talk about, uh, it's always a good idea to use merge fields. So that way, you know, teams can use it, solo agents can use it, and it just makes it a little bit more flexible for people to use that smart plan. And once again, if we wanted to bold it, we can bold it, and then we're gonna change the color of it. So let's make it this crazy looking mustard yellow, and let's just go super big. There we go. That is going to get a response, right? I mean, that is an amazing thing. Like, that's what I do. Here's my, here's my tip of the week. 
send an email, make it mustard yellow with like size 67 font and um, your clients will love it. Just kidding, of course. But, and of course, once we're done with this step, we can hit save. Now let's say you wanna be a little bit fancy, right? You just don't want a plain text email, a simple email. You want pictures and you want graphics and you want all that cool stuff. Well, that's where the designs option comes in. Within command, we have our designs and we're gonna have a class on that next week. Uh, but just to give you a quick rundown and we're not really gonna dive too deep into designs, but I just kinda wanna point it out what you can do from within the Smart Plans email step. If we click on designs, we have an option to select a design. So when we click select design, it's gonna bring up a screen which allows us to pick our design, right? The first thing I wanna point out is it defaults us to the KWRI templates. These are the email designs that KWRI has built, right? If you wanna preview one, you can right click on it and preview. And here you can kind of see what the just listed luxury design looks like. Here you can see it's gonna plug in the contact's first name. It's gonna plug in some additional information as you go through it. You know, you're gonna to need to update it and change it, right? Um, update the pictures and you can swap all that if we were to select this template. And here you can see it plugs in your information as the agent, right? It's using all the code. If you wanna see what it looks like um, on a mobile device, we have these three icons at the top. If we click the little phone, this is what it looks like on mobile. In the middle is tablet. And of course the giant monitor looking thing is desktop. So you could select this and then within designs, make the needed changes to this email and have it sent that way. You also have the ability, if you've already designed your own emails, right? If you've already built your own email templates within designs, you can click my designs. And here you can see the email templates that you have built. So I just kind of want to point that out. You can't start from scratch within here as much as you just select something that's already been built and then you can make small design changes. So very, very cool. Um, if you want to add a little bit more flair to your smart plan emails, this will fit the bill. So now we're going to go back to the smart plan editor. In this case, I'm going to stay with simple um, just because I'm a simple kind of guy. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then the other thing I want to point out once again, now we have two touches because sending an email to a client will always be considered a touch. So now let's say after that email goes out, I wanna set another delay. I wanna wait another day, right? Because this email is gonna go out on day five of the smart plan. So I add a contact today, five days from now, the contact is going to get this email. I'm gonna drop in another delay. I wanna wait two days. And then I wanna then follow up with a text message. So I click the little text message, uh, send SMS, MMS. And now I can send a SMS, a text message, if I have a Twilio account connected to my command. This will only work if you are signed up for a Twilio um, cell phone number and you have that plan connected to your command. Extremely easy to do. Um, we're not gonna delve too deep into it for this class, but you just go into settings and or marketplace, do a search for Twilio and sign up. It's extremely reasonable. Um, basically it's an at cost purchase. And when it really boils down to it, it's basically a penny per text message that goes out. It's like 1.1 pennies, right? But I just always say it's a penny per text message that goes out. Something to keep in mind when we deal with sending a text message through command, um, very similar to when you send an email from command, you will get a unique Twilio phone, phone number that those text messages will come from. We cannot make it look like it is coming from your cell phone number. It's impossible. Um, well, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's actually illegal. The FCC basically says, hey, you're not allowed to spoof text messages, right? It's against the law. So that's why we cannot do it. So it will be a unique number that you can kind of pick from available numbers based upon your area code when you sign up for Twilio. And um, if someone responds to that, it will get attached to their contact card um, within command. So you can kind of see what their responses are. Um, and then if they, if they call that number, we can have it forward to your cell, but it's never gonna look like it's coming from your cell. So I just kind of want to point that out. Um, 
The other, so when we want to build out, we have a message type, right? We have static and dynamic. We're going to talk about that in a moment, but let's just talk about how to build out the text. So it's just going to be like writing a text message, just like creating an email. We have our merge fields, the same merge fields that are, were available to us when we build our email. We can say, hey, contact first name. Haven't heard from you in a while. Hope all is well. And the really, really cool thing when you're building out a text message is we have this little smiley face. That's for a while, I guess, I guess it's, there is a space, huh? You learn something new every day. Um, there's a little smiley face in the lower left-hand corner. When we click it, this allows us to bring up all the different emojis, right? So I'm a big believer in the poop emoji. And then let's drop in, oh, uh, let's go with the robot. The poop and the robot emo emoji. Um, you know, studies have shown if you include a poop and a robot emoji in your text messages, no one will ever call you back. So just want to just be aware of that. Oh, and then of course, we can then end with agent first name, you know, agent last name. One thing I would recommend though, if you're ever setting up a text message being sent from command, always, you know, if you put your name in, I would then also include your phone number. And no, you're that, you know, you're not, you guys aren't going to get my phone number, um, but always include your phone number, right? And the reason I would say that is very, very simple that since this is coming from a unique number, right? It's not coming from your cell phone. We want to give every avenue for someone to reach back out to us from, um, you know, to our real true phone number. One of the things I would recommend if you ever, you know, utilize this text message functionality within command and you're sending out text messages and someone calls you, you want to get off that Twilio call as quick as possible and then call them back from their cell, from your cell, right? If, if you get a text message from within command and they're responding back, then grab their phone number and then text them from your phone number. Try to get them off of using the Twilio number as quickly as possible. A, because the more back and forth texts that come through it, uses your credits. B, if you stay on the phone on that forward, that uses credits. Um, but C, it's just gonna be a lot easier and be a lot more conducive to your business if you get them using your true phone number and you have their true phone number and you can kind of go back and forth. Now let's talk about dynamic. Um, why, what are the difference between static and dynamic? So if you hover over it, it does a pretty good job of explaining it, right? It's a single text message. It's not re recommended for repeating smart plans. Set up multiple text messages recommended for repeating smart plans. So if we click dynamic, this is gonna give us the ability to create up to six additional text messages within this single step. Why would we wanna do it? Well, we have a step here and I'm gonna kind of jump ahead here. It's called restart smart plan. If I click it, we can have it run through this smart plan up to six times or an unlimited amount of times, right? So what that means that at the very end of the smart plan, which is the only time you can have the restart smart plan, it has to be the very last step. If we want it to then, once the contact makes it through all, all these steps, we can say, hey, repeat it one more time. So then it will push that contact all the way to the top at the very first step. And in our case, it would create another task for us to make a call for that contact. It'll wait three days, create another task to check for the birthday in this case in command. Um, it'll wait another day. It'll send this email. It'll be the same email because emails cannot be dynamic. Um, and then it'll wait two days. But then when it gets to this step, the second time around, it's not gonna send text number one. It's going to send text number two. And you can have it do that for up to six rotations through a single smart plan. So generally, um, you know, the dynamic is tied to the restart smart plan. And in most cases, you're probably not going to utilize an email within a repeating smart plan because then they're just going to get the same email, but a different text. To add an additional text box, 
add another text option, and you can do that up to six times, and you can see it easily identifies it. If you add one too many, we're just gonna hit the trash can to the right. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions about that, right? It's gonna rotate, um, and if you were to do an unlimited, after it gets through the first six, on the seventh time through, it'll get text message number one again, and then on the eighth time, it will get text two, and so on and so forth until the end of time. That typically is a little confusing, so hopefully I, I did a better job of explaining it this time. But if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself, throw it out there, type in the chat. Um, hopefully that kind of made sense to everyone. Then. Phenomenal. Uh, the last thing I wanna point out before we jump off this text message step is this little notice down here at the bottom. So it is your job. Oh, Kendall's got a question. Oh, yeah, we'll, we will cover that in the end, Kendall. So don't worry about that. Um, I will make sure we cover that for sure. All right. So uh, I want to point out this notice here. This is extremely important. It is your guys' responsibility to make sure that you're not calling and or texting someone who is on the do not call, do not text list. You know, this is a very serious thing and agents across the country are in fact getting fined when they violate this. Now, what does that generally mean? That means that, you know, you just don't wanna go into a situation and you don't wanna buy a contact list. You don't wanna to go to like the yellow pages or the white pages or your church, or like maybe your kids are part of a sports league and just grab that contact list, throw it in command and start to spam those people. Generally, the rule of thumb is that if someone has reached out to you, maybe via a Facebook campaign um, or you uh, personally an email, if they've opened up that relationship with you, you have a certain amount of days that you're allowed to have a conversation with them, right? Because it's not fair for someone to call you and say, hey, I'm interested about this property, call me back. And then you call them back and they say, wait a minute, I'm on the do not call list, I'm going to see you. It doesn't work that way. You're going to want to check with your TL. I don't know the exact dates of that, um, but I just want to caution you. Just don't throw, dump a bunch, bunch of phone numbers into command and then add them to a smart plan and start to spam them. Um, it's not a great look. So I want to kind of point that out. So of course, we've added some stuff. We're going to hit save. Oh, can't restart the smart plan. So we're going to, let's kill that right there. And I'm going to hit save. Now, the last step we're going to talk about is add to smart plan. So if we do this, add to smart plan basically allows us to, at any given time at this step, to add this contact we've added to this smart plan and have them automatically get added to any number of the smart plans we've already downloaded. This would be a great way for you to daisy chain smart plans if you need to. Um, this can be used as you're building out a particular smart plan. Maybe you want to send a text message and then um, maybe the, you know, you want to add someone to the neighborhood nurture, right? After you have a task that says, hey, make sure, you know, um, you know, let's, let's do, there we go. Um, maybe you've created a task to verify that they have a neighborhood associated. Um, and then when you complete that task, you've given yourself enough time, it will add them to the neighborhood nurture smart plan and then you can set a delay, and then you can follow up with a text message saying, hey, um, yesterday I added you to the neighborhood, neighborhood nurture. I wanted to make sure you got it, um, if, and hopefully you find it valuable. If there's any additional neighborhoods you'd like for me to add, blah, 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 right? So you can kind of use this add to smart plan as an option to do just that. Now, I know we kind of went quickly over the seven smart plan steps. But as you can see, building a smart plan is extremely easy. When we look at the arrows, for instance, it's pretty basic, right? Since we're on the very first step, I can't move it up. It's the very first one. But if I want to move it down, I can click down. And now it waits three days and then it creates the task, right? If I want to delete a step, extremely easy, right? I just go and I locate the step I want to delete. Uh, if I don't want to add to the smart plan, if you notice how the circles are actually on the box, I'm going to hit delete and we're going to remove it. 
Pretty simple. And at any given point, once again, I can hit save. Oh, what did I not complete? I probably didn't complete the text message one, so let's do it. And then I can hit save. Fantastic, right? I have an eight day, eight step, three touch smart plan. Now, before we jump off the screen, the other thing I wanna point out is this add trigger event box. So one of the cool things we can do within command is we can set up smart plan triggers based upon contact tags. So if I click on this, I can only do contact tags, right? And then this is gonna give me a list of all the tags within my command. So let's just say I'm gonna say class tag and I click choose trigger. And then it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna do this? Absolutely, I'm gonna confirm it. So what this basically means is that going forward, any time going forward, I wanna be very clear, this isn't retroactive, this is a going forward trigger. Anytime I give a contact, in this case, the class tag, it's immediately gonna add that contact to this smart plan. So what's cool about this, if I know that I'm gonna use a couple uh, tags and these tags generally are gonna be associated with smart plans, maybe I built a past client smart plan, I can associate my past client tag with that smart plan. So as I go through and I start to tag my clients, they will immediately get added to this smart plan. Once again, this is a going forward smart plan. Um, if someone already has the class tag and by me adding it to the smart plan, it doesn't add them to the smart plan. It's just gonna be new contacts that I tag. Hopefully that makes sense. You can add additional tags to a single smart plan as well, right? So if I want anyone that I tag with my class tag, but I also want anyone that I tag with my garage sale, when I tag either of those, it will add them to the smart plan. If you tag both of those on the same day, it doesn't add them to the smart plan twice. Um, if you, you know, if you have a smart plan that runs eight days and on day one I tag with the class tag, and then three days into them being on the smart plan, I also then tag them with the garage sale. They don't get added to the smart plan twice. But be cautious when you're using multiple tags within a smart plan. If I add someone as a class tag, and then 12 days later, after the smart plan has already ran, I then tag that same client with the garage sale tag, it will re-add them to the smart plan and they'll start day one and it'll start to go through that entire process. So be cautious when you're doing multiple tags on a smart plan and be very judicious with the use of that. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Just so I don't make a mistake though, and, and I'm gonna remove my triggers. And then of course, at any time, that's all right, I deleted a bunch. We're gonna hit save. Pretty simple, pretty basic. We built out a smart plan. Doesn't take any time and we can modify a bunch of things. So before I leave this screen, does anyone have any questions about the actual nuts and bolts of building your own smart plan? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Not really, you can always ask questions later. Awesome. So we're gonna jump back to our smart plan library. And if I refresh the screen, since I'm sorting by created, you can see here's my regional smart plan class. So now that we build a smart plan, let's talk about how can we add contacts to a smart plan? We've created a, we've created a, a smart plan, Josh, this is phenomenal. How can I add my contacts? Well, as mentioned, you could do the triggers, the tag triggers, right? Which is a great thing. Within this smart plan screen here, we can come over here on the right-hand side, we can click add contact, this little add contact button. In here, we can filter by tag, you know, and then we can try to locate, you know, um, and select all and then add them to a smart plan that way. If you want to do that, I'm not a fan of that because this is honestly just not the most um, robust way to add clients to a smart plan. So, what I prefer to do is use the contacts applet. So I'm gonna jump into the contacts applet. And once again, remember we can hit this little KW in the upper left-hand corner. And this is gonna give us the name of everything. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump into contacts. So from the contacts screen, 
we will see a list of all of our contacts. Here I can filter down to something specific. So if I just want to add everyone who has the class tag and apply, it's gonna filter, it's gonna show me all of them. Here I can see I'm showing one of 23 and then I can just select them all. But I wanna be very cautious. I wanna point you out to this. This is truly the value of showing um, how many contacts you wanna show at once. You can add up to 500 contacts to a smart plan at once. Um, but let's just say I had this at 10. So now it's only showing me 10 of 23. If I come over here and I click this top box to select everything on my screen, watch what happens in the selected option. It just selects those 10. So if I want to select up to 500, I wanna make sure I adjust this and go to 500 or 100 or two, whatever it is, whatever is gonna allow you to see all of them. Because once I click this top box on the left-hand side, it's gonna show me that I have selected 23. So I'm gonna be able to add all 23 of these to the smart plan. Then I can utilize the bulk action option, which only appears if we have one or more contacts selected. So if we have no contacts selected, there's no bulk actions, right? Pretty simple. We're gonna select them all. And then from this drop down, we are going to go to add to smart plan. This gives us the ability to search for a particular smart plan in our library. If we just have so many smart plans, there's just so many of them, right? We can search but we're gonna add them to my regional smart plan and we're gonna hit select. Now, this is a really, really cool screen. And I wanna point this out for a couple of different reasons. It gives us the ability to determine when this group of 23 contacts will be added to the smart plan. I have the ability to add them all now. So if I click confirm, it's gonna send all 23 of these contacts immediately to the smart plan. I have the ability to start on a future date. So say I built a smart plan that is surrounded around Easter and I want this to go out on Easter day or the day before Easter, I want a text message or an email to go out to my clients. I can schedule it to go out on the fourth. So if I hit confirm, command will queue these contacts that I have selected up that on April 4th, they'll be added to the smart plan and it'll start to trigger those individual steps that we have built out. We also have the ability to stagger start over the next few days. Um, so this is really, really handy. So think if you are utilizing a smart plan that is gonna create a bunch of tasks, right? And you want that task to be set up. Um, and I'll give you some examples once we get into the smart plan library, but this will allow you to determine how many contacts per day will get added to the smart plan. So command can add four at a time each day until it completes adding all 23. What's really valuable about this, if you create a smart plan that creates a task on day one, for instance, and you add 500 of your contacts to that smart plan and you click start all now, you're gonna have 500 tasks sitting in your command waiting for you to complete. Can be extremely overwhelming. You're gonna look at it and you're gonna call me like, Josh, there's just too many tasks, I can't do it. And then the rough part there is there's no mass way right now, there's no way for you to just automatically delete all your tasks. So you either have to go through, delete them, complete them. Um, and that can be a lot of clicks. So be very, very cautious when you're adding groups to a smart plan, make sure you understand what that smart plan does before you just add them all now. Um, so if I wanted to stagger them, it'll create four tasks per day per con like for those, those contacts that get added. And it's something that's a little bit easier to manage. Hopefully this makes sense. This is a really valuable piece. And especially when we talk about um, some of the smart plans you can download and that we'll recommend. Any questions about this whatsoever? Awesome. All right, so I'm not gonna add anything there. I just wanna show you how I prefer to add contacts with smart plan, especially in bulk. Um, I think this is the best way to do it. So now we're gonna jump back into smart plans, right? We're gonna come over to the left-hand side and we're gonna click on smart plans. And now let's talk about the smart plans library. So 
So smart plans library, which we can access in the upper right hand or in the upper left hand corner here to the right of my smart plans, is one of the biggest value adds of being a part of the Keller Williams family. You know, we've walked you through building a smart plan, but you may be sitting there thinking, Josh, that's phenomenal, but I don't have time to build a smart plan. I sell real estate. I don't build smart plans. Well, what's really amazing is that with the library, you have access to tons of different smart plans that have been built by Keller Williams that do some pretty cool and unique things, as well as smart plans that have been built by agents like you who have published them. So if we talk about the Keller Williams smart plans, there's 10 of them and these are canned smart plans. And there's a couple in here that I always kind of want to point out to everyone. The most single important thing you could ever do to your business, if you do nothing else, if you don't want to send texts, if you don't want to do any kind of follow-up, if you don't want to do anything other than the single probably most impactful thing for your business, it's going to be to utilize the quarterly call plan smart plan. This smart plan, and if we kind of dig through the smart plan, um, card here, right? You get a name, you get the name of the smart plan, a quick breakdown of what it does. It reminds you quarterly to reach out to your contacts, right? You can see when it was published. You can see how many agents within Keller Williams are using it, almost 30,000 agents. You can see the average star rating, four and a half stars. How many steps, how many days this smart plan runs and how many touches, right? We want a quick summary of what this smart plan does. We can click view steps. And hopefully by now, this is all going to make sense. When you download this smart plan by clicking add to smart plan, right? It's going to download it to your library. When you add those contacts to this smart plan, it's going to create a task that says call, contact, first name, last name, phone number as part of the quarterly call smart plan. Then it will wait 90 days, repeat unlimited, and then it's going to remind you 90 days later, it's going to create another task for your client to call that client. If you do this alone, this is the single most impactful thing for your business, right? Reaching out to your clients, your sphere, four times a year with that personal touch. Um, they say in general, the MREA says it as well, right? I mean, it's, it's a staple. This is the single most impactful thing you can do. The other smart plans, um, and of course, this shows you the value as well, that if you were to use this and you want to add a group of your contacts to it, definitely take advantage of the stagger option we just talked about. Because if you add all 500 of them, then you're going to have 500 calls that you're going to have to make today. Then you're going to have 500 calls you're going to have to make 90 days from now. And that can be pretty overwhelming. So you want to do maybe four or five, six, and just stagger those out. The other couple uh, smart plans we want to talk about is the birthday smart plan. So the birthday smart plan is pretty amazing. This will trigger off of the birth date within your contact card. So if you have a birthday in for your client and you add them to the smart plan, so uh, basically six days, six, seven days before their birthday, it's going to create a touch task to remind you to send a handwritten or note or a birthday card to your client, right? This is going to be before their birthday. Then it's going to wait four days and then it's going to create a, uh, a task for you to give them a call and say, hey, I can't believe your birthday is this week. I can't believe your birthday is a couple of days away. How, how crazy is that? Happy birthday. Then it's going to delay another day going to create a task to say, hey, make sure you go on social media. Make sure you, you post something for their birthday. And then it can automatically send them a message from your Twilio as well, the day of their birthday. Pretty powerful smart plan, right? And this is one of those things that is a great example. While you can automate a lot of things with a smart plan and command, you could automate every text message, every email, and never physically have to reach out to your client that's not really the goal of the smart plan, right? It's to help do some of the heavy lifting, but real estate's always gonna be that belly to belly business, right? It's a relationship-based business. So don't just rely on automated touches, you know, and this is shows you exactly um, why and how powerful this would be. Everyone loves to get mail that is in a bill, right? And they get a, a card from you, then they get a phone call from you, and then you post on their social media, and then you can kind of leverage an automated text message. That's cool, right? You've reached out to your client in such a way that they know that you care about them versus the business that they can provide. The other one we want to talk about is the monthly neighborhood nurture. This is your basic smart plan that if you have their neighborhoods designated within their contact, every 30 days, it'll send them an email containing 
um, what's happened within their neighborhood, if anything, right? Are there any new listings? Has, it, has anything sold? Has anything pended? Did anything expire? Like what, what's going on within their neighborhood? And this will just repeat every 30 days. And then last but not least is the home anniversary smart plan. Uh, this will tie off of the contact, um, the home anniversary date within the contact card within command. This will just remind you, hey, to do a touch task seven days before their anniversary, to drop a card in. Six days later, then it'll remind you to give them a phone call on their home anniversary, right? Saying, hey, I, you know, today's the day you bought 123 Sesame Street. Hopefully you got my card. I can't believe it. You know, if you really think about it, these four smart plans, right? The home anniversary, the monthly neighborhood nurture, the birthday, the quarterly call plan, you're going to do quite a bit of touches intermingled between automated and personal. Um, and if you just did these four smart plans, your clients are going to hear from you on a regular basis, but and it's going to be value adds in addition to care calls, right? Very, very powerful. Now, let's talk quickly about the um, smart plans here. Uh, these are the smart plans that have been built by different agents. So we have our top rated. So here you can see a five-star smart plan that is being used by 4,000 agents. Um, you can kind of scroll through this list and see if there's anything that jumps out at you. Your once new smart plan, this is gonna be anyone that has just immediately built a smart plan and published it, you're gonna be able to see it. So this, we don't know exactly, this was published literally today, right? March 24th, I don't know the time. It's gonna happen just moments ago when it has appeared, right? And this is used if you come from another broker, just to see what it does, I'm curious. It's gonna send out an automated HTML email. We'd actually have to add this to our library. Um, so let's go ahead and let's add it and let's see what it looks like. Just out of curiosity, right? Only two agents are using it. So let's add to our smart plan. And this is how easy it is to add something to your smart plan. And Kendall kind of pay attention to this. If we add to a smart plan, we can change the name of it if we want, but it has to be unique. And we're just gonna click download. I've never seen this smart plan, so bear with me, we'll see what happens. When we do that, if we click my smart plans in the upper left-hand corner, we can see this new smart plan and this is inactive. So you could go in here and make any changes to the smart plan because it is an inactive smart plan. A smart plan only becomes active when you have contacts associated with it. So to give you an idea, if we click the little pencil to the right of this, uh, move to a new brokerage smart plan, I can go through and I can make any triggers to this smart plan that I want. So here's the subject line. Sometimes realtors need to move to happy to amounts my new brokerage KW. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what she's working with. Oh, nice. So she put some effort in here. There's some verbiage and then it has all your codes, right? Your information is going to show up, your brokerage logo, um, your market center logo, I should say, um, and all that great information is going to go out to your clients. You can see what it looks like on mobile. Look at all that. Awesome. We could change this. We can delete this. We could add a step to agent downloaded smart plans, agent created smart plans if we want. But now looks, look what happens if I try to go into my commercial class smart plan that I built. Since I have 22 people associated with that, if I click edit, it's going to look a little different. It's going to say, hey, this is an active smart plan. You cannot make any changes to this smart plan. Right, um, not any, you can make some changes. Here are some of the things. You can change the name, you can modify the text messages, the task description. So I could change this, um, I could have it, I could change the email, right? I could add or remove triggers, but what I cannot do is add additional steps, delete additional, delete steps that I don't want or change the order because it is an active smart plan. I could duplicate it and then make changes to that duplicate smart plan because once I copy it, duplicate it, it is not going to, it's not going to be active, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, the one thing to note that if you download any of the Keller Williams smart plans, those 10, the birthday, the home anniversary, the quarterly call plan, even if you don't have contacts associated with them, most of those are canned smart plans um, because they do very specific things that we cannot do ourselves when we build it, such as trigger off of birth dates, and home anniversary dates. So those are gonna appear active even if you don't have contacts associated. And that's just because we don't allow you to make changes to those. So there, there, that's the slight wrinkle. 
Uh, sure, absolutely. You can duplicate the smart plan multiple ways. If we're outside the smart plan, we can click the three little dots and click copy. If we're within a active smart plan, so let's say I'm inside this, whoops, this active smart plan with the, with the two contacts, down here in the lower right-hand corner, we can duplicate the smart plan. It's gonna say, hey, give me a name. We can click make a copy. And now if we go back to the smart plan, you know, it's actually gonna take us immediately into the copy so we can start making changes there. And then we also should see it within, oh, let me go back to the, we should also see it within our smart plan library. So we have a few more minutes left and there's one last thing that I wanna point out to you. How do we see what contacts are on a smart plan? Under the contacts column, we can see none of these are active smart plans, but if I come to one that has the 22, um, or any number, this is gonna indicate how many contacts are a part of this smart plan currently. I can click the eye. It's gonna pull up a list of all the contacts. And if there's one particular person I wanna remove from the smart plan, I can click on Aaron's name and I can confirm unsubscribe. If I wanna remove everyone from the smart plan, I can unsubscribe all. Smart plans will also show up under the contact card. So if I go to contacts, and I'm in a particular contacts card, right? So let's go ahead and let's let this load and I'm gonna jump into Aaron. If I go over to smart plans. I can see that he's a part of this. And if I wanted to remove him from this smart plan, I could hit the unsubscribe um, and that would remove him. And if I wanted to add him to a specific smart plan, just he, him himself, I can click that and it brings up that familiar add contacts to smart plan modal. So are there, you know, um, that's pretty much the basics of smart plans, right? This is just your basic rundown of how to utilize smart plans. Extremely powerful, one of the most powerful tools within command. You have access to the smart plans library. Um, the one tip that I will always give you, if you download a, li a smart plan library, a uh, smart plan from the library, make sure you go through the steps with a fine tooth comb. Right, make sure you understand what each step is going to do. And you may even want to add yourself as a contact to the smart plan first, just to make sure that it's doing what you want. Because the last thing you want to do is download a smart plan that another agent has built. And maybe the agent had intentions for you to go in there and change certain pieces of information, but you didn't. And now your client's getting texted another agent's info or uh, information about an area that is not pertinent to them. Very, very powerful. Um, oh, one last thing I wanna point out within a smart plan library, you have the search capabilities. So if you're looking for something particular, say you want a smart plan to utilize with your Facebook campaigns, do a search for Facebook and you're gonna see tons of different Facebook campaigns. There's tons of them out there. You know, they're not all the same. They're not all created equal. Here's a lead follow-up that's 13 steps over nine days with seven touches. Here's one that's 10 steps over five days with six touches. Here's nine steps over 23 days with five touches. You don't, you know, find the plan that makes the most sense for you. And once you download it, feel free to go through and update it, right? Make some changes to it and then turn around and publish it yourself. Very, very powerful. Uh, the filter is um, where you can kind of drill in a little bit, right? Smart plans that are a certain duration. If you're looking for a smart plan created by a certain person, certain touches, certain ratings, you can filter those as well. But that is Smart Plans 101. Um, hopefully you learned something. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Are there any questions, concerns, criticisms, compliments? You're welcome, Kendall. I'm glad. I'm glad you uh, got some value out of it. If you have no questions, I'm going to go ahead and um, end the class. But what I would say is that uh, if you have additional questions, make sure you reach out to your MCTT within your market center. Um, they are the people that have been designated by your market center to help you with command technology. Uh, feel free to reach out to me as well if that makes the most sense. If you do not know who your MCTT is, please um, make sure. Uh, reach out to your MCA, your TL, and they should be able to point you in the right direction. Outside of that, have a great day, my friends, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for the next regional class. Take care.